Welcome to A Course in Business Miracles. This is Heather Dominic, creator of businessmiracles.com and founder and leader of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. Join me today for some genuine practical assistance and a business altering and life changing experience. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode number 18 worth. Listen in to today's episode for why you must learn to claim your highly sensitive entrepreneur strengths, not just as gifts, but as an imperative part of living your purpose. There's a concept in the course called the laws of chaos. From chapter 23, And the title of that chapter is The War Against Yourself. Now, these laws at first do not seem to be the goals of chaos, for if they're reversed, then they actually appear to be the laws of order. But the Course invites you to look at them calmly and simply to understand what they are, not what they maintain. The Course says that these are the laws that rule the world that you made rather than the world of divine. These laws of chaos govern nothing. They need not be broken, but just merely looked upon and then moved beyond. And I recommend that you write that down. Moved beyond. Chaotic law number one. Truth is different for everyone. So this law states that people are separate, people are different, and some people are more valuable than others. In truth, this chaotic law interferes with the first principle of miracles. And that principle of miracle is There is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. And let's write that down too. There is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Chaotic law number two. Errors call for punishment rather than correction. So if you miss the mark, if you make a mistake, wow, well, you must be attacked. You must be punished. You must be deemed unworthy. You are unforgivable. And your destruction is inevitable. Now, this chaotic law, this is a big one for highly sensitive entrepreneurs. Because we not only strive for perfection, we imprison ourselves with perfection. And if we miss a step, oh my gosh, horror of horrors. We didn't just make a mistake as far as we're concerned. Oh, no, no, no. We've demonstrated how we don't deserve and how unworthy we are. So what do we do? We do everything we can to try to control every single situation. And this control primarily serves as an attempt to keep us out of overwhelm and to not be visible. Because if you're not visible, then you can't be seen for how different you are, but you also can't be seen for how unworthy you are. And this approach, this approach of control and doing everything you can to try to keep yourself from even having to possibly experience overwhelm, this creates extreme stagnation, if not a full stop in your business. And as a result, everyone suffers. You suffer. Your ideal clients suffer. Your family suffers. Your ideal clients' family suffer. And the sacred contract that you have with your ideal clients who are out there waiting for you to choose to be seen for who you are 
in your V and V energy, they never have the opportunity to actually be experienced, excuse me, actually experience being served by you. And all because of chaotic law number two, the errors, even the possibility of a mistake calls for punishment rather than correction. Correction simply being the opportunity to try again. I have a saying that a mistake is just a mistake. And you get a take two and a take three and a take four and a take five and a take six because that's what life is. Chaotic law number three. Now, this is truly a preposterous belief that seems to and will just make chaos an eternal experience for you. Chaotic law number three, God doesn't make mistakes, but I do, so God must hate me for it. This automatically means I'm so unworthy. I also can't turn to God for help. If I do, he, she won't be there for me anyway. So my business is doomed. I'm doomed. I'm all alone. There's no release from this. There's no escape. There's no forgiveness. Destruction is the only outcome. I am not safe. I will not succeed. So I might as well not even fully try. Chaotic law number four. Now, I know when I was first practicing these principles within the course, I thought, really, really, there's more? (laughs) These first three chaotic laws aren't enough? Chaotic law number four. You have what you have taken. For example, another's loss is your gain. And vice versa, your gain is another's loss. Well, what does that mean? Well, according to this chaotic law, it means that we are not here to work together. You can't really trust anyone to help you. And you are not worthy of help and support. Deep breath in. And let it out. As I'm sure you can begin to feel already, these chaotic laws are, according to the Course, mechanics of madness. They are set up to have you consistently driven crazy. Yet, you choose to live by them and you use them as evidence to prove why you are not worthy of what you desire. In the Money Mindset Training Intensive, which I've created and which you receive automatically and right away with your six-month group coaching program membership, I teach what I refer to as the money archetypes. One of those archetypes is what I call the entitled queen. So when it comes to worth, the entitled queen, she stamps her foot She raises her voice, she clenches her fist, and she says, I deserve this. I deserve this. I've worked really hard. I've given a lot. My life has been really difficult. You don't know what's happened to me. I deserve this. And meanwhile, inside, she is scared and extremely insecure. But her outer facade is one of supposed warrior, anger, attitude, I deserve. All of the programs out there tell me that I deserve, so I deserve. But meanwhile, she doesn't feel it at all. And then on the other side, there is the money archetype of the scullery maid. Now, the scullery maid is down on her hands and knees. She is scrubbing the floor as hard as she can, for as long as she can, as fast as she can. 
she is working herself literally to the bone. And with every scrub, she's saying, I will prove to you how valuable I am. I will prove to you how valuable I am. And I don't need very much for it. I don't. I don't. I will just prove to you how, just give me enough to get by. I will prove to you how valuable, how worthy I am. And inside, she is scared. And she is insecure. And she will work and work and work for not very much, for very little an attempt to not really be seen for who she is, but just to be able to prove that she deserves to be here. And for many of us highly sensitive entrepreneurs, we fall into one of those two archetypes and maybe have zinged between the two. I know that I have. Now, in the middle of the entitled queen and the scullery maid, funny mindset archetype, of the regal queen. Now, the regal queen has her feet planted firmly on the ground. Her spine is straight. Her head is tall. Her shoulders are pulled back and her heart is open. And she knows that from this place of being grounded, from this place of taking care of herself, she is more available to take care of others, of all of those around her, her entire queendom, all of her clients in her business. She has done the personal work. She has showed up and a willingness to be real, to be genuine, to learn from all of her mistakes and to continue to move forward. And this is the place that is accessible so easily for us, for those of us who are highly sensitive. Because we can so easily tune in. We know the value of care. Care for others and care for self. But we must be willing to let go, to release, to surrender the entitled queen, to reach down and help the scullery made up off the floor, to step into our true strength, into the power of using our HSE abilities as assets. And that is true client attraction. That is true magnitude, that is true manifestation. Deep breath in and let it out. And then there is a final chaotic law. And that chaotic law states, there is a substitute for love. This is the endless Endless search for the magic pill that will cure all your pain. And here are some examples. Food, overworking, money, and this is my favorite, spirituality. So if I eat enough, then maybe I will feel loved. If I overwork, if I work hard enough, then maybe I will be loved. Once I have the money, once I can finally have the money, then I will be loved. If I surrender any need for money whatsoever in the name of spirit, then I will be loved. If you believe any ounce of any of this to be true, how could you be worthy? You could not. Yet, as we've already discovered, in any instant, it is possible to have all this undone. So how can you know whether you 
chose the stairs to heaven or the way to hell? How can you know whether you choose on a regular basis the stairs to heaven or the way to hell? Quite easily. Check in. How do you feel? Is peace your awareness? There was recently a post from a member who has stepped forward into the six-month group program, and I thought it was so powerful what she shared, recognizing that she was taking a leap of faith, but that in the past when she joined programs, there was this you know, rush of, hell yeah, I can do it. And this time, she simply felt a sense of calm. And my friend, that is power. Not that we don't have moments that, of course, are filled with energy and enthusiasm, but what's underneath Is that energy, is that enthusiasm, is that a hell yeah, just a cover-up for the fear? Is it just a cover-up to say, I don't really want to look at what's going on inside me? Because that's the entitled queen. Is peace your awareness? Do you have a sense of certainty about which way you go? Are you sure the goal can be reached, even if you don't know how? If you have that peace, if you have that certainty, if you have that surety, then you have chosen the stairs to heaven. If not, then you walk alone. And the way through this, joining with others. Joining with others of like mind. Joining with others of like heart to give you the buoying, the support to help keep you on track of certainty of where you're going. And there's something that's really important. Please know that this isn't an accident. The miracles that have been experienced are due to our coming together And this sense of connection and community must be cherished, it must be cultivated, and it must be continued. And to think that this can be done by simply re-listening to recordings or being friends on Facebook is a bit of a trick of the ego mind. It's a way to think you're doing it differently, but not really having to change. It's a clinging to the old Every level of change requires a bigger level of investment, whether that be time, energy, or resources. It simply is law. You cannot create a new way of being from an old way of thinking and an old way of acting. Commitment is the highest energy of all. And in our culture, money is the form in which we express commitment. So the questions to ask yourself, what are you committing to? And what are you clinging to? I want to share with you an excerpt from a book called When the Heart Waits by Sue Monk Kidd. And this section is called the diapause, D-I-A-P-A-U-S-E. And I recommend that you write this down. The author, Sue Monk Kidd, is writing and saying that one day, Sandy, her husband, came home from work with a book on butterflies. He was grinning. Maybe you can discover how a caterpillar knows it's time to spin a cocoon, he said referring to the question I'd asked him on the phone that day, the one he'd mistaken for a riddle. Earlier in the book, she shares that she asked her husband, how does a caterpillar know it's time to spin a cocoon? And he answered, I don't know, how? 
She writes, that night I sat in the den and read about the mysterious process of metamorphosis. The most surprising thing I discovered is that caterpillars don't yield themselves to the cocoon at the same rate. When the moment to spin the chrysalis arrives, some of them actually resist and cling to their larval life. They put off entering the cocoon until the following spring, postponing their transformation a year or more. This state of clinging has a name. It's called the diapause. I looked up from the book with a smile. Well, what do you know, I thought. All God's creatures have trouble letting go. There's a natural diapause in the human journey of transformation, a time when we hold on to the self we know. It seems that at the moment of our greatest possibility, a desperate clinging rises up in us. We make a valiant attempt to save our old life. In the words of Daniel Day Williams, we fear it is all we have. Even in its sufferings are familiar and we clutch them because their familiarity is comforting. Yet so long as we aim at the maintenance of this present self as we now conceive it, we cannot enter the larger selfhood which is pressing for life. Deep breath in. And let it out. What are you committing to? I am still just so amazed and so blessed by what has come through this experience for myself, for my team, for you. It has been such an honor and it will be such an honor to continue with you. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Course in Business Miracles. If you're ready to learn how to use your highly sensitive abilities to support you in being purposeful, profitable, and empowered rather than scattered, poor, and undervalued, take my free self quiz to find out if you are indeed a highly sensitive entrepreneur. And if you are, along with your quiz results, you'll receive my free HSE success guide, which will teach you how to have your highly sensitive abilities working for you to create the results you desire in your business. Take the quiz and receive your free success guide now at www.hsequiz.com.